Hi everyone, welcome back to this special video. Now, I'm always very burdened to talk about COVID-19 vaccine in children. And if you have watched my channel for a while, you would have known that I have a nine-year-old son. So this topic uh, is relevant to me. And now that the CDC recommends all 12 to 17 years old should receive the Pfizer booster dose five months after their primary series, there was actually a little bit debate during the meeting to debate if the language should be using a should receive or may receive. Now, we do have to recognize that there are a record number of children hospitalized with COVID-19 in the U.S. right now, and most likely due to the Omicron variant. This is very concerning and sad. During the discussion, the CDC did pull up a not-so-up-to-date figure showing unvaccinated 12- to 17-year-old had about 11 times higher risk of hospitalization. But that is not the strongest argument for giving the booster dose. Let's look at why. Now, because the CDC agrees that the primary goal of the COVID-19 vaccine is to prevent severe disease, including hospitalization and deaths, and everyone agrees that the primary series is very effective in preventing hospitalizations and death across all ages, the real benefit of booster for 12 to 17 year olds are to prevent even mild symptomatic disease so kids don't have to miss school and can have in-person learning and interaction with peers. But how effective is the booster dose to prevent infection? Now, Israel showed us some preliminary results. Basically, we see that the primary series has almost completely lost its effect to prevent infection after five to six months. This graph shows that after five to six months, the infection rate is nearly the same as unvaccinated. Now, the booster restores the protection. This data was mainly from the Delta variant. Now, we don't know how the Omicron changes the vaccine effectiveness in preventing infection. The worst part is that we know the antibody level drops as soon as three months. So in order to prevent infections in kids, technically, we kind of have to subscribe to Pfizer vaccines every few months. Second, the CDC did not tell us the comorbidities of hospitalized children. Now, according to this older study published in June 2021, about a third of the hospitalized children had underlying medical conditions. The strongest risk factor for hospitalization were type 1 diabetes and obesity. And the strongest risk factor for severe COVID-19 was also type 1 diabetes and congenital problems in the heart. Now, a more recent paper from UK researchers shows us that about 0.8% of pediatric ICU admission due to COVID-19 had no comorbidity. This rate was the same during the 2019 to 2020 influenza season. The most significant reason for healthy children admitted to ICU was post-COVID pediatric inflammatory multi-system syndromes or PIMS. The CDC calls PIMS as MISC, which shows that the primary series is already 91% effective against that condition. So how much more benefit would the booster dose give? We don't know. Third, the CDC also did not discuss the situation where children had a recent breakthrough or are recovered before the primary series. Now, immunologically speaking, these groups of children had already been immune boosted from infection and vaccine. What additional benefits would the booster dose give to these group of children? Unfortunately, the CDC did not talk about that, and we don't know at this point. Now, even if some parents want to give the booster dose to the, those kids that have recovered from breakthrough infection, the CDC also did not discuss the timeline which they should wait before that booster dose. And I'm not sure how a pediatrician would answer this question. So if you know this answer, please leave me a comment as well. 
Fourth is about the risk of myocarditis. The CDC presented a table showing myocarditis risk after the second dose for 12 to 15 year old was about 45.7 per a million doses or 4.5 per 100,000. Now in terms of the risk after the third dose, we can only rely on Israel data again. They found two cases after about 44,000 doses, which is still about 4.5 per 100,000. So it is good that the third dose did not appear to increase the risk of myocarditis compared to the second dose, but it doesn't also appear to be lower. Now this message was not delivered very clearly during the meeting. So the vote came down to having one out of 14 members vote against the should recommendation. Now, interestingly, the vote no actually came from my profession. The fact is that even though we have adequate supply of vaccine, pharmacies right now are extremely short-staffed to give additional booster dose. The bottom line is that hospitalization and death rates is very low in children who had the primary series. What would an additional dose do to that number? When the data shows us that most of the hospitalized children are unvaccinated, the booster dose would not reach that group of people either. So the booster is not the solution to the current surges in hospitalization. So the real remaining benefits of giving booster dose to 12 to 17 year olds is really to prevent some cases of mild symptomatic infection so that they can be in school, they can have in-school learning, in-person learning, and also can interact with the peers. Now this is very important but this benefit is rather impossible to measure with a number. But can we really gift the booster dose every five months or so? Now before I end this video, I'd like to present one last figure. About a third of parents said they would not give their teenage kids the COVID-19 vaccine back in November. Has Omicron changed parents' mind about giving their children the vaccine? Now please leave me a comment and let me know and I'll see you back here again on Sunday with my regular updates and take care. Bye.